Hello, and welcome back to Gay Chill Crafts. I'm Sarah. And I'm Rick. And today uh, we have another field trip report for you. Um, unfortunately, Rick was not able to come with me. Um, he had some other things planned today. But uh, my mom and I went up to Waterbury um, for a couple of reasons and picked up a couple of fun things. Um, so the first thing we did was we went to Yarn, um, which is a yarn, sh our local yarn shop. Um, you've been there a bunch I've of times. I've been to the ones in Montpelier, yes. Too, yeah. And it's been in Montpelier, I think, for, um, they just celebrated their 15-year anniversary recently. Yeah, it was there when we first moved to Montpelier in 2005. Mm -hmm. Yep, and um, had been there in a couple of different locations within the main part of the city. Um, for those of you who don't live in Vermont or aren't familiar, Montpelier is our state capital. It's in central Vermont. Um, it's about 30 minutes from our house, and it's a cute little town. They've got a lot of things going on, um, and I like to make a day of it and go up and, you know, hit the yarn shop, go to the pet store, go to a nice restaurant. All the all the things that are harder to get to around here are all kind of concentrated in Montpelier. Which is why I was very sad that I wasn't able to join them today, because there are some great restaurants in Waterbury, and we'll get to that later. Right. Um, so, uh, this yarn shop, though, had to unfortunately move out of Montpelier, um, but in a way it's, I think, a blessing in disguise. Um, they unfortunately lost the lease on their space due to new ownership. The new owner wanted to use the retail space available themselves, and they weren't able to secure another really good retail space in Montpelier. So they moved two exits north to the town of Waterbury, um, which is kind of known, it's the home of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Um, it's known as the home of the Alchemist, um, yeah. the original home of the Alchemist uh, Brewery, um, and now Yarn is there. So, my, like I said, my mom was with me. We went to their open house. We got our nice tote bags, um, and we picked up a little bit of yarn. We were, we were pretty well behaved, but we knew with the opening that um, we wanted to pick up some kind of souvenir, and I got this Savage Heart Farm yarn. Um, this is their two ply Cormo. It's very squishy. I don't know if you can see how squishy that is on camera. I wish there was <laughs> squish a meter, yeah. touch a vision or squish a meters or something. We could share that. Um, but anyway, it's lovely, lovely yarn. And I already have a plan for a new design Ooh. that I'm going to do with this. So stay tuned for that. Um, she hasn't told me yet either, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a real surprise. Um, <laughs> So, so we enjoyed it. I really like this space. It's uh, in a little shopping center, so it's a little weird because the shopping center doesn't have the same kind of Main Street character as their previous location did. But once you get inside the yarn shop, it is gorgeous. It seems so much more bright and airy and spacious. Um, the previous shop was sort of long and skinny, and so you had to keep going back and then back and then more back. <laughs> yeah. um, it was kind of like a long corridor. And this one is just a big rectangle, very open. Um, and like I said, lots of good natural light, lots of good places to sit in it. And um, the other thing I've always really appreciated um, is that they have a good selection of just wool yarns. They have other stuff, but they don't have a lot of weird stuff. They just have a lot of your kind of standard go-to, you know, wool yarns, which is the main thing that I knit with. So, yeah. so and I've, I've picked up sweater yarn for, for Rick there before, and I've, picked up sock here and there before. So it's a great selection. And if you're if you're coming through the state or you're visiting, definitely check out yarn in Waterbury. What do we know about this Savage Heart yarn? Not a whole lot. I feel like I've met them at one of the festivals, probably the Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival. Um, like I said, it's a Corydale and Cormo blend. Mm -hmm. So those are both Merino hybrids. Um, so it's very soft. I don't know if you felt it. I haven't. Um, it is very nice. Yeah. And it's very bouncy. It's got a lot of air in it. It's kind of underspun. Mm -hmm. The singles are underspun. I'm um, excited to see what you make with it. Yeah. So. Um, and we'll link, we'll link to them in our show notes, of course. So um, that was the main reason for us going up to Waterbury. But of course, when my mom and I go anywhere together, of course, we have to eat. Um, so we went to the Prohibition Pig, which I think you and I had been maybe once before a long long time ago when I it's still not. the alchemist no no well we went when the i mean was that building yes we yes. were in that building when it was an Al the alchemist uh we right. went with the group uh the nascent homebrew club group 
hired a local person in their van and we went up and this is actually before Hetty Topper even. So mm -hmm. the big beer that was there was the uh, Celia, which was a, actually a gluten-free beer and had great food, et cetera. But that was my first experience with the Alchemist and it was well before, or not well before, but a couple of years before uh, Hetty Topper came out. But it was also just before Irene flooded. Right. Yep. So, um, so like you said, they were, they were more known as, well, they started as a restaurant and mm -hmm. they had, they were a brew pub. And so, you know, the owners were making beer as well, but like you said, they hadn't really hit onto like the big hoppy Vermont IPA that they're, of course, the flagship brewery for Correct. now. And, um, so this was before that time. And then since then, um, the Alchemist, of course, has set up their own brewery off site. They've separated they sold the restaurant after it was flooded in the big Irene storm in, when was that? 2011, I want to say. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. it's almost been eight years, coming up on eight years. Um, and so Prohibition Pig was the, the next iteration of that restaurant, and that's where Mom and I had lunch, and we had a delicious lunch. Um, it's, as the name suggests, it's a very meat-heavy restaurant. They did have a nice salad and uh, tempeh option, so it's, it's vegan, vegetarian, accommodating, but I would not say it's probably your top choice if that's what your main diet is. It's very much barbecue and brisket and fried chicken and... You're making me hungry. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, I had a nice sandwich. And, of course, we were there to um, to check out some of Prohibition Pig's beers. So Prohibition Pig now has taken up that gauntlet and has an on-site brewery. Um, it's actually around the back of the restaurant if you're going there. And uh, had some, some interesting beers on their menu. I did have one of these three for lunch. I won't tell you which one I had with my lunch. They're all new to me. Um, but I got a selection of different styles for us to try. So I thought it would be sort of a nice a souvenir of my trip to bring back to Rick as <laughs> I've been doing before in the past and uh, and to try some different beers that we haven't had before. So It's a consolation prize of sorts. Right, exactly. Yeah. No barbecue, but at least you get beer. This first one is called Bantam and it's their flagship double IPA. So I guess this would be their answer to Hetty Topper, essentially. It's their highest alcohol, um, highest hop IPA. A little bit of a melon. No, it's got a really nice mm -hmm. color, nice haze, good Ooh. lacing. Mmm. Bam. <laughs> it's, it's very, very good. Nice. Um, huh? I would say the alcohol and the peppery of the hops were the first three things I noticed, and then it kind of met, smoothed out into the fruitiness of the hops a little it's bit. It's certainly creamy. It's certainly got a yeah. creamy finish on the tongue. Mm -hmm. um, bitter without the bite. A uh, little bit of a kind of a. Um, I'm not getting a lot of bitter hops flavor. I'm no. actually just getting more of a peppery sensation on yeah. my tongue, kind yeah, of a that's zingy. A, that's, a, that's a good. Yeah, that's hops a good taste. description. Mm. It's great. Okay, so that's the Bantam Double IPA, mm. and then the that other was the Bantam. <laughs> the others. No, it's pretty um, good. Glad there's more. Don't have a a name per se. They're just a style. So, um, Oops, sorry. the second one, so the second one we'll taste is this, uh, winter lager. And you can see it's quite dark for a lager. It's got a, uh, some kind of black malt in it. I don't know exactly. So it has a very sm a smoky nose. Ooh. Oh, that's lovely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Smoke, a little bit of nut. Slight tang, probably, mm -hmm. from the yeast. Well, it definitely has some kind of winter spices, which I don't mm. detect so much on the nose, but definitely on the palate. You're correct. They aren't there on the nose. You're mostly getting that that uh, nutty, toasted, mm -hmm. smoky nose. But, yeah. And it's really, it's deceptively a nice light body, but not too thin. Mm-hmm. It's very nice. You can tell that it's a lager style once you taste it. Looking at it, you sort of go, what is this going to be? Is it going to be a brown ale? Is it going to be a... I, I, hesit I, I hesitate um, to compare it to a beer that I haven't had in 20 years, but uh, it reminds me of Pete's Wicked Ale, uh, some oh. of the, which was, again, an ale. This is a lager, but it's got a similar kind of uh, aftertaste, if I recall correctly. Again, it's been a long time. Hmm. This is very nice balance. The, yeah. the nuttiness reminds me of Newcastle almost. But there's a but that's there's almost there. like a blueberry finish on the tongue. 
that I associate uh, with the Pete's Wicked Ale. Okay. Do you can take a sip and let it roll over your tongue. There's almost just, just a hint of a berry of some sort or a winter, a, a dark berry. Mm. Yep. I'm, that's okay. what I'm getting. And that's what's making me uh, compare yeah. it to that it's, other beer. It's sweet on the finish to me. I'm yeah. still getting a lot of nuts and a lot of winter spices mm -hmm. myself. No, I, I agree, yeah. but I, I think the end has a bit of a, mm -hmm. a, a berry fruit, uh, a dark fruit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yummy. It's great. Good. So, and then the last one I chose because... This is one of my favorite styles, is porter. They had two styles of porter, and I had recently had a lot of coffee, like oatmeal stout we were drinking here. Mm -hmm. um, so this is their vanilla bean porter. Ooh. Made with Madagascar vanilla beans. Mm -hmm. I do remember that detail from the menu. Real, it's that means. very thick. Madagascar is the, the best Very thick beans. and treacly. It's, I don't know if that's showing up on camera, but it looks very syrupy in the you glass. You cannot see through it. There's almost no light coming through that. Yeah, but it's got that, you know, maple syrup look. Mm -hmm. Sticky look. There's a bit of viscosity in the mouth as well. Mm -hmm. It's nice. More carbonation than it's showing in the glass. Yeah, exactly. Well, they were sitting while we were we were pouring while we were getting set up, and mm -hmm. all of them are well carbonated. Um, but again, because these are takeaway growlers, they mm -hmm. have a limited shelf life, so we're going to yeah. have to finish these pretty soon. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's so day. terrible. You know, this is For great. Us. I actually wish we had picked this up prior to the holidays, mm. although it's nice to have a little nostalgia. You know how you get that burnout after the holidays, or almost like a... Um, there's like a depression that comes afterwards because of all the hype that you had. And then there's that letdown after the new year. Yep. It's a holiday excitement. It's worn off your back at work. Yeah. You ate all your holiday candy. You're kind of like... Mm. <laughs> and we've been having some severe cold weather. So the last yeah. couple of days, it's been below zero Fahrenheit. Uh, so sub-zero temperatures. So fresh snow, cold temperatures... And a, nice, is, a nice warming you beer. You sit behind yeah. the fire, sit by the fire. <laughs> and warm yourself up with beer because it's not the a real fire. Because it's not a real fire, but the beer, very real. Yeah. And very good. I feel like it's got a smoky nose as well. A little, a hint of smoke on the nose. It's mostly that's the a, vanilla. Yeah, and that's whatever the, the malt they're mm, probably okay. using. Um, but it's not too bitter. It's got a nice balance no, to it. It's not bitter at all. Mm. It's not cloyingly sweet either. No, it isn't. The vanilla is like a sugary. It's not like vanilla ice cream that kind of flavor. It's like a. But it lingers, which is nice. Mm -hmm. It does linger on the tongue without being too cloying yep. and without being too overpowering. I Neither agree. one of us are a big fan of too much cinnamon or too much vanilla. But this mm -hmm. is a very nice balance. To yeah, me. I agree. Good. Yay, go me. <laughs> well done. So the one I'd had with lunch was the um, the winter lager, just because to me it made sense having that with a burger. Um, how did, and did that pair well? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yep. And how so, was the burger? But I'm pleased. It was delicious. Like okay. I said, we both, not, both my mom and I really enjoyed our lunch. Um, so highly recommend Pro Pig. And uh, well, even if you can't sit down, take some beer to go. They have they have tiny little, like 16-ounce growlers. They, I got the 750 milliliter ones. Mm -hmm. They have big ones. You can bring your own. They sell stainless steel ones. They also have growler cans, which are the big nice. cans. That's nice. uh, I didn't get those because then you really do have to finish that all in an evening. And mm -hmm. I... I wasn't sure you can if we would wait want to longer to open it. it, but once you open it, you have you're committed to opening the same thing to drink the, that in the in the evening. Yeah. Correct. The 750 milliliters that you got are the flip top box uh, bottle top, so you can uh, put those back on. They do very well as far as sealing it because you got the rubber gasket. Mm -hmm. But again, it's something you do want to drink uh, quite quickly within a few days, yeah. rather than. But we don't have to drink them all in an evening. And as much as I like beer, I don't want to like chug a gallon of beer. You Not know, a good craft beer like and this. Enjoy your craft beer, right? So, but one of the things I'm it. sorry to tech, uh, change gears, but one of the things uh, I didn't hear you mention is that yarns. Aren't you going to be doing some uh, some teaching? Oh, I am. Yes. So that was one of the reasons I wanted to go and uh, check out the space. Um, it was mostly just to high five Lee, the owner, and you know congratulate her um, on getting moved on and getting into a new space and revamping everything. Um, but I did want to check out the space also because I will be teaching a double knitting class. So 
Um, we'll be announcing that in our newsletter. Don't forget to sign up. That's on our webpage, and the link is below this video. Um, I'll also probably put it on Instagram, I'm sure, once the uh, class is announced and scheduled. It's going to be late March, early April, sometime in there, um, a two-part class on double knitting and um, the fees they charge, I think, are very reasonable. It's going to be forty-five dollars plus materials. Yeah, so, that's reasonable. so not bad for six hours of instruction. And I then think. you can stop by the Prohibition Ping and exactly. have your lunch or your dinner. Exactly, and pick up some beer to go. So. We are not being sponsored by Prohibition Ping. We no. received nothing. Other. We paid full dollar for these. Yes, so we you did. Know. Yes, we did. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but well worth it. Well say. worth it. Yes, and I would definitely go back. Cool. Well, cheers. Thank you all for joining us. As always, we appreciate it. And uh, tune in next time. We'll have more for you. Thanks for joining me. Cheers. Always a pleasure when you have beer. <laughs>